解像感って何だと思いますか For me, sharpness is all about realism. 解像感は質感をリアルに再現するものでデジタルではなく優れた光学で得られます。So like、ニッコールレンズは色にじみなく髪の毛一本一本をシャープに改造します。Lens, 映像の画面全体に今までにないリアルさと奥行きを感じることができます。それが私たちの改造感です Hey guys, Happy New Year! Welcome to another episode of Nikon TV, our first for the year 2019. I promised Kendall I wouldn't mess that up because I've always been saying 2018, but we are back 2019. And in our first episode, we are actually going to go through all things Flash. This episode is going to be dedicated to Nikon's entire portfolio of products, starting from the SB300 all the way to the 5000 and everything in between. But before we get to all of this, we're going to keep you up to date. With the recent developments in the last three weeks here, the early part of the year from Nikon, we've had some big announcements, which we're going to tell you right now on Nikon TV News. All right, so out of the gates, guys, we've、uh, made a couple of big announcements. First of all, Nikon has announced a couple of brand new products, brand new Coolpix products that we are coming out with in next month, which is February. The first of which is going to be a brand new super zoom pocket Coolpix camera, the A900, which I actually have with me right now. This is a, a 24 to 840 millimeter zoom. So, in one lens, you get all that. Now, a couple of the enhancements that we've put on this model over above the A900 is it now has a flip down screen for your self portraits. It has an, sports an electronic viewfinder as well as it's the,、uh, one of only three cool pixels that have the ability to shoot in RAW. So, those are the big enhancements. In addition to that, is the lens. The lens is a 24 to 840 millimeter all in the optical zoom. And we have a couple of examples here right out of our first production camera model here in Cam- Canada. This was taken at the Raptors game, 24 millimeter. And in one shot, we were able to zoom in all the way to the maximum extremes. Of this lens to 840 millimeter equivalent in 35 millimeter terms. That is the power of the A900. And find it at your store this coming February. The next on the list is the Nikon Coolpix B600. And this is our newest bridge zoom camera coming out again next month. We are gonna have、um, uh, this camera available, which sports a focal length from 24 millimeter to 1440 millimeter, all in the optical zoom range. And for convenience, it's powered by four AA batteries. So that's the new B600. Check it out on our website. A couple of new、uh, announcements for the Z series that we just announced at CES this past、uh, week in Las Vegas. And the first of which are、uh, dedicated to the Z6 camera. And because of the success of this in the video community, Nikon has dedicated an entire new kit specifically for the Z6 called the Z6 Filmmakers Kit. And this kit is a partnership with three、um, third parties that are going to comprise the kit. First and foremost, this kit is going to be、uh, coupled with the new、uh, N- Atomos Ninja 5. Monitor and recording device. This is going to take advantage of a brand new firmware update in the Z6 coming in the next few months that is going to allow it to be the first camera on the market that sports an、uh, HDMI feed that gives you full 4K raw video. This is going to be the first HDMI camera to do that in conjunction with our partnership with Atomos. Now, in this filmmaker's kit are also a gimbal, a、uh, Pro Rode microphone. It's going to come with the kit 24 to 70 millimeter f4 lens from the S line series from Nikon, as well as the FTZ adapter. We're going to couple it with two batteries, as well as a couple of arms and HDMI cords to allow you to use the monitor while it is on the Mosa gimbal. 
Now, uh, that's one firmware update that Nikon has announced for the new RAW feature coming out of the Z6 as well as the Z7. But we are also announcing at CES, uh, we've previously announced the compatibility with a future memory card, state of the art, CF Express. And this firmware update will allow the Z6 and Z7 to use the new format, which is called CF Express, same form factor as the XQD cards that writes at 1400 megabytes per second and has up to one terabyte capacities. And the third firmware update that Nikon's announced at CES is the long awaited uh, uh, sorry, IAF feature. So this is a revolutionary new autofocusing function that will be available on the Z6 and Z7 that isolates eyes on their subjects and even allows you to switch between different subjects' eyes. Check out the YouTube site to see examples of this in play. Nikon's already teased about it. Um, lastly, I will mention because I do have a copy of it here, Nikon has also announced the brand new 14 to 40 millimeter wide angle F4 zoom for the S line series. This, again, this lens is gonna be available starting next uh, April, I believe. And this lens retails for about $1,800 here in Canada, but it is the first wide angle zoom for a full frame at 14 millimeter that has a flat front allowing you to put on filters, neutral density filters, polarizing filters, especially with the new firmware update for uh, filmmakers allowing you to go full ProRes raw out to your uh, monitor. You can shoot in uh, the new N-Log format and that starts at 800 ISO. A lot of filmmakers will be utilizing the neutral density filter on this wide angle lens. Super sharp lens. Check it out on our website. It's already getting um, great reviews. And that, my friends, is Nikon News. All right, so um, getting started uh, for this new episode, we're going to try to get you guys a little bit more uh, involved in um, this episode. So we want to hear from you guys in the comments if you guys are using flashes already. So I believe we're going to try something new here. We have a poll up on the screen. So basically, yes or no question, do you currently own an external flash? Whatever it is, SB500, SB700, SB600. Click yes or no, and tell you what, if you already have a flash, comment in the comment section below. Tell us which one you have. We'd like to know, all right? So um, let's get to it, folks. Now, we're talking about flashes. I have a whole bunch of them in front of me here, but before we talk about them, let's just talk about generally when you would use a flash. Now, I mean, if you guys don't have a uh, flash yet, and you know, you've know you sort of been used to uh, look at this. Am I going to be the first one? Oh, Peter. Ah, he beat me to it. I wanted to be the first one that said I have an external flash. Okay. So, um, if you, <laughs> if you don't already have an external flash and say, um, you're wondering why you need one, given the fact that all of these cameras now have the ability to shoot at 12,800 ISO. I mean, even if I pick up the D 3500, which is our <laughs> entry level SLR camera, this has the ca capability of shooting up to 25,600 ISO natively. So a lot of people might be thinking why you would need a flash. Well, first of all, let's address cell phones. Cell phones typically, um, they have large megapixel sensors now and a lot of them have flashes that you could use, but they're typically underpowered. So let's just give you a typical situation. You might be in a restaurant, you might be taking a photo of someone in front of you. A lot of these restaurants nowadays are very dimly lit. So if you take a picture with your cell phone, it's usually underpowered in terms of the lighting and it just doesn't have the aperture and ISO to light it properly. If you have something like an SLR and you have the pop-up flash on this camera, this allows you to light up your subject, but the great thing about SLR is it has something called slow speed sync. So that means not only can it light your subject, but you can set it to slow speed sync and burn in the background. So that means your subject is perfectly balanced with the ambient light around you. And guess what? The camera figures that out all on its own. So that's why you need flashes. You need it to light the foreground, but again, with the sophistication of these Nikon cameras, it can perfectly blend it with the background, something previous cameras didn't really necessarily do all that well. If your camera has the slow speed sync function, definitely look for that. It's usually a lightning bolt that says slow. So you'll hear a couple of clicks on the shutter because the shutter is open for a longer period of time, but that allows you to blend it in with the background. Now, that's just the advantages of using the pop-up flash. Again, much more powerful than the small LED lights on your cell phones. That's already at an advantage. But what if, your Nikon camera doesn't have a pop-up flash. And to tell you the truth, 
my Z camera right here, which is already a really advanced camera, my D850, D5, etc. <laughs> None of them have pop-up flashes. So again, I've been shooting a lot with the Z series, the mirrorless uh, cameras, and I like to have a smaller form factor, but again, I might not wanna take a huge flash along with me just to get that little bit of kick of light that I need to fill in my subject. Uh, I mean, if you look at the size, I, I don't know if we can get a B shot on this, guys, but <laughs> the size of the SB500 is almost the size of the camera itself, okay? So there's gonna be some advantages. I'm gonna show you about the uh, uh, the B, sorry, the S. Oh. What are we talking about? What letters are we talking about here, guys? SB5000. But um, here is something that Nikon has, and this is the, um, SB300. Now this is a very little known flash. A lot of people do not know that Nikon has this flash. It's, it's a simple uh, flash that pops onto the hot shoe. Again, if you have a Z6, Z7 camera, again, look at this, it doesn't have a pop-up flash, so you're totally reliant on the ambient light. But the SB300 sits perfectly on the camera. It's, it's got enough clearance here that it can clear the, you know, most of our uh, short, uh, tele uh, short lenses and not only that but it has the ability to tilt okay so this is not just a straightforward flash it tilts and if I can just get a close-up on this here it not only tilts 90 well 75 90 degrees up straight up but it also goes uh, 120 so you can actually tilt the lens a little bit backwards from you so you can get light a little bit more flattering on your subject. So that is the SB300 and that's a flash you can get for under $200 here in Canada. So I'm referring to MSRP prices here in Canada. SB300, nice simple flash. I love the fact that it can bounce, okay? Next in the line here, I'm gonna go to the SB500. So, you know, uh, the numbering system makes sense from Nikon. This flash here retails for 349 MSRP, that's the, just the retail price here in Canada. All right, and um, the benefits of the SB5000 is the fact that, well, as you can see there, it also comes with a stand. And the reason it comes with a stand is that you can position this flash remotely off the camera. So I'll get into this in a bit, but if your camera has a pop-up flash that allows you to trigger remote flashes. This is the first flash in the lineup that you can use as a slave flash. So not only can I take it off the stand here and pop it on the hot shoe, but I can also remotely trigger it off the camera provided that I have a commander. And I'll get into that in a second. But I just wanna show you the fact that this can also bounce. Now I referred to the bounce in the SB300 and I'll show it to you right here. Not only can it bounce, okay, so it can point directly at your subject, it can bounce, but it can also rotate 180 degrees both ways, okay? Um, not only that, but it's small form factor. So if I take it off the flash here and, I, and you look at it, it just fits in the palm of my hand. I can literally fit this in my pocket and it's only powered by two AA batteries, okay? I forgot to mention that the SB300 is powered by two AAA batteries, so it's a smaller form factor, but the SB500 is powered by two AA, so it's a little bit uh, more powerful. Uh, for those of you that have never used Bounce Flash, let's show you a quick uh, image here that just shows you why you would bounce the flash. And simple reasons such as reflective surfaces like windows or anything that has a reflective uh, surface can cause reflection in your picture, like you know, taking a picture of this, whatever it is, diplomas or pictures or things like that that are in frames. You see on the left-hand side, the direct flash causes that white reflection in the picture, whereas the bounce flash, you don't have to worry about that. Think of people that wear glasses, eyeglasses, and you wanna take pictures, portraits, and group portraits of them, et cetera, et cetera. They always suffer from the reflection in the eye, and nobody wants that but also bouncing the flash off of a ceiling, for example, gives your subjects a little bit more shape. It's a little bit more flattering because you, you have a little bit more character with your subjects because the light is coming from another angle. So that's the benefit of bouncing the flash. And that's something that you can do all the way from the SB300 and now with the SB500. Now, if we look at the back of the SB500, I'm gonna show you a couple of features with this flash. And that is, you might see there, um, you know, there's an off position, there's an on position to use the flash on camera. If you go all the way to the top, you'll see an A and B. You can actually use this, uh, like I said, as a remote flash, but you can also use this, believe it or not, as a commander flash as well. So this can be a commander on a couple of units. So we'll go to our website to see which ones are compatible. And using the, the third channel, you can actually use this as a commander uh, speed light. Now, 
Lastly, what I will mention is a lot of our, well, practically all of our cameras with the exception of the DF can shoot in video, high definition video, some of them 4K. But the SB500 is unique in that this is the only unit, flash unit, that doubles as a, can we see that right there? That is an LED light for your videos. So it's a constant light that goes on. It has three different strength levels. So I just popped it right there. One, two, three. And um, you can match that to the exposure of your video and just gives, gives you a simple video light, okay? So that's the only flash in this lineup that has that feature. Now, for those of you wondering, well, you know, 349, uh, I might as well just go up to the SB700 because it's going to give me more power. Just how much power can the SB500 give, give, given the fact that it is a smaller flash? Well, let me just rewind just back to our release of the D750. And we shot the camp, a couple of the shots from that campaign, lighting it only with the SB500. So the next couple of shots I'm going to show you here are shot only with two SB500s. Can you believe that? So it's fast enough to stop the action. It's fast enough to uh, give a little bit of a direction of that light. And because I can take it off camera, again, I can create the shadows and the drama that I want from the SP500. Again, a lot of people that go to Nikon flashes usually go to the top end, but they have a lot of great products on the entry level tier that are very fully functional. So check it out, SP500 uh, 349 in Canada. So in the next flash we're gonna talk about we're getting more advanced here. It's the SB700. So you see there's a trend, 300, 500, 700. Easy numbers to remember as we're going up the chain. And in Canada, the SB700 retails for just $100 more. We're at $449 now for the SB700. Okay, so what can the SB700 do for you over, say, the SB500 that I just showed you? First of all, it's a little bit more powerful flash. Don't ask me to tell you the guide numbers. You can look that up on the website yourself and find out exactly how powerful this is. It's a little bit more powerful. It is using four AA batteries, okay? So it's the form factor is thicker now. It's not easy to fit in your pocket, but what it's gonna give you is the ability to remote command flashes up to two groups, okay? So you can have two groups of flashes being controlled from this. This is actually now a master flash. It can be a remote flash, it can be off camera, but it can also be a master flash. So if you have an Icon camera that doesn't have a pop-up flash that's a built-in commander, so you might have an older camera, you might have a D60, you might have a, I don't know, uh, a, a Nikon camera that simply doesn't have a pop-up flash that can be part of the CLS system, this is a, a flash that you would look at as an entry to having a commander unit. And I would highly recommend a lot of people get this, even over say an SU-800. SU-800 is about the same price, but it doesn't have a flash, okay? Um, it's basically just a commander. So that's what I love about this flash. You can control two groups of flashes using the CLS system. The CLS system is based on line of sight, so it is infrared. So any flash that is based off of infrared, if we can get a close up here, guys, um, you'll see on the side, it has a little eye here on the side of the camera. So that needs to be seeing your commander at all times for reliable output. And the great thing is, you see it has a stand here. If I put this on an umbrella, for instance, I can just turn it the other way, you know? So if my umbrella is this way and my flash is on the other side, I can, I can position it so that my flash is always, my commander flash is always seeing that red dot. So literally you could create your own studio with, you know, three SB700s and away you go. It gives you plenty of power that you need. And again, I'm just gonna show you some of the interfaces here at the back. It has an improved uh, GUI. So the, the graphic inter interface is a lot more intuitive. You get uh, a little bit more buttons and things that you can do with ratios. Uh, and that's the SB700. Um, I will mention the fact that the SB700 also comes with a few other accessories. So we have gels here, um, green and orange gels to basically match for your typical incandescent and fluorescent lighting. It also comes with a diffusion dome. So this is the first flash in the lineup that will sport a diffusion dome as well as two filters to match for ambient lighting. Now, um, again, for those of you that uh, have just joined us, we're talking about flashes and um, we're talking about bouncing flash and the, and the ability that brings. Now I've talked about power going up these, uh, this flash lineup, 
but nobody really talks about accuracy of metering, and that's a big reason for getting a Nikon flash if you already have a Nikon system, um, is the accuracy of the metering when the lens talks to the body, talks to the flash, and it reads the light in front of them. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples now, shot with the next flash that I'm gonna talk about. This, is, this, this was shot with the SB5000. This is Nikon's flagship flash, and this was simply used on the hot shoe of the camera I was using at the time. I think it was the D850. And this is our most expensive flash. This is retails for 769 here in Canada. So at 769, you put it on top of the hot shoe and you point it directly at your subject and you practically get the same lighting that you would get with a pop-up flash. Now, let's skip to the next picture here. And this is bouncing it off the ceiling. And you can see here, you get much more shape with your subject. You can get shadows that you know accentuate features in your subject, but if you find it's too much shadow by pointing it straight up, the great thing is that you can tilt and swivel it 180 degrees behind you. So the next picture I'm gonna show you is actually bounced through the wall behind me. It's a softer light than going straight at you. It gives you a little bit more shape with the shadows, but not as drastic shadow under her chin. Uh, and again, I'm taking these one after another. I'm gonna show you another two shots where I just bounced it off the wall. So I took the flash, I swiveled it off to the side, I bounced it off the wall, which was probably you know, about 10 feet to my left there, and I got that shot. Again, the flash is doing the metering for you. Whatever your aperture, ISO, shutter speed, it figures it out and gives you the perfect balance so that my subject's highlights are perfectly exposed. And I flick it to the other side, and just like uh, I expect with the last four shots, the fifth shot is just as reliable. And now in quick succession, I just took five pictures, all of them properly exposed, all of them with a different look in terms of where the shadow lies. And I'm right in the ballpark, if not perfectly exposed with the SP5000. Again, another thing that is hard to explain when you're looking at specs for flashes, people usually look at guide numbers, they're looking at price, but a lot of things that you gotta take into consideration is really something that can't really be, it's hard to communicate over specs, and that is the reliability of the matrix metering of Nikon's flashes with their cameras, with their lenses. And none does it better than the SP5000. Again, this is our flagship flash at 769. It has the highest guide number of all these flashes out there. It even has countermeasures for overheating, so they even built in a built-in fan in this flash here to keep it from to keep it at a cool uh, temperature. Um, also, because this is the first flash in the lineup, okay, and I'm going to talk about this in a second, that has radio. So you're going to wonder why such an extreme jump in price. We're going to talk that, about that in a second, but I also want to highlight the fact that this also comes with the diffusion dome and the two gels, which I'm going to show you right now on screen. Uh, these are to compensate for incandescent and fluorescent lighting. And I will tell you that the great thing about the system is when you put on those gels, the green and the orange, the camera knows that you've put that on. So you can actually leave it on auto white balance. You do not need to match the white balance to incandescent and fluorescent. The camera knows because there's a barcode at the bottom of these gels that tells the flash that you're using this. And even if you're on auto white balance, it will match the white balance of the camera to the gels that you're putting on this flash. Um, and, it will, uh, and it fits with the diffusion dome on top of the gels if you wanna couple them at the same time. Now, um, again, I was talking about the reliability of the TTL system. I just wanna show you this. When you're pointing the flash straight at your subject, the flash even gives you a guide as to the zone with which you can reliably expect proper and accurate exposure with the flash. So this is the GUI at the back of the SP5000. And look at this, with a 50 millimeter lens, uh, shot at 5.6 at ISO 200, on a DX camera, it's telling you that you can get a proper exposure anywhere from 0.7 to 11 meters away from your subject. So basically the flash has the ability of throttling the capacity to output a proper exposure within that limit. And it is even smart enough that if you put it on an FX camera, it will make minor adjustments to give you proper exposure. So I find this user interface extremely helpful and extremely intuitive, especially when you're trying to make quick decisions when you're using your flash. Now, uh, a couple other things I gotta say about the SP5000 is if you're putting it on, say, a camera 
that has a long lens, which is what I'll show you in the next picture here. It sits very high on the camera so that it has good clearance over long lenses such as a 24 to 70 VR. So again, this, uh, this sits highest on the camera. It gives you good clearance. If you wanted to, you could deploy the wide angle adapter there at the front and it will actually spread the beam a little bit further so you can have even, even greater clearance uh, and things like that. Okay, so that's the SB5000. Um, but before we go a little bit further on, I do want to talk with, to, with you about the, the unique feature that this has in that it is our first and currently right now only radio flash in our entire lineup. So Nikon has been leading the flash market with their CLS technology, which is based on line of sight. But starting in 2016 with the release of the D5 and D500, they came out with the SB5000 which basically unearths some features within these cameras with the use of a very small remote trigger. If you guys haven't seen it, you need, if you have an SB500 and SB5, or if you have a D500 or a D5 at home, or a D850, uh, you'll need this little piece right there. And that is a WRR10 as well as a WRA10. This clips to the 10 pin port and that's all you need. You don't need uh, any other trigger or whatever. This is the trigger, okay? And when coupled with cameras that are compatible with it, it can allow you to trigger the SB5000 via radio. That's the key. Radio is uh, way more flexible than the infrared system because it allows you to penetrate barriers, it allows you to shoot from further distances, and it allows you to shoot with a lot more reliability. So let's just take a couple of examples here. We got a quick schematic uh, shot here with the SB5000. And this is kind of the, the setup for the next shot that I'm gonna show you. We have a couple of flashes hidden behind trees and one behind the subject itself. So when you see the next shot here, we can create a lot of drama with flash because we can isolate the subject. We can base it with the power of the SP5000, we can literally kill the sun. We could kill um, the ambient light and focus only on our subject being lit only with these flashes. And the flashes, although geometrically within this composition are hidden behind both the subject and trees. So that's something that would be very difficult to do with um, the CLS system because of the reliability and because of the need for line of sight. With the radio system, we can do this now very, very reliably. I'm gonna show you another couple of examples here shot with uh, the D850 uh, for another campaign that we did for that camera. And this is a photographer by the name of Little Shao, I believe is his name. And he shot the next image here. Um, and he shot this outdoors. Okay, so this is really the beauty of this system. You see light coming from behind his shoe there, and he's again, he's doing it outdoors. So with the reliability of radio now, we can trigger it um, reliably outdoors and through barriers. So this is the behind the scenes shot. You see a couple of other flashes in the scene there, and they're essentially behind the photographer. Okay, something that would be very hard to, to do with CLS system outdoors, because there's nothing to bounce that, that infrared signal off of. So when you're working outdoors and you wanna shoot through barriers, you could be the maximum creative, you, you can maximize your creativity in this respect because you can shoot through barriers, you can shoot outdoors, and you can shoot with reliability because the infrared signal is not competing with the sun because you're not using infrared, you're using radio, okay? Uh, I shot this myself. I, I, I did uh, an event one time outside and I will tell you every single shot went off without a hitch. So I'm really pleased with what Nikon's done and the direction they've gone with the new AWL system, which they're now calling their advanced wireless lighting. Now let's show you a couple more examples of where the Nikon system, flash system really thrives. Now, I'm gonna show you an example here shot by our very own Rob Sturgis of Nikon Canada. And he shot this with the D5600 with the kit lens 18 to 55 VR. That's just ambient light, uh, lighting his subject there with ambient light. But you see there are shadows. You see there are shadows under the eye um, that he could fill if he just had a flash. Luckily the D5600 has a pop-up flash. And the next picture I'm gonna show you here was with the fill-in uh, pop-up flash. Now, that is a great fill flash and it serves its purpose in that it was able to fill the subject. But if I know Rob Sturgis, and I know if he's out there listening right now, he has so many telephoto lenses in his uh, pocket, 
and a lot of portrait lenses with wide open apertures. And I know he's looking at that picture that right there and he wants that portrait to blow out the background. The problem is, if you want to blow out the background, you're probably going to have to use a 1.8 lens. You're probably going to have to use uh, a wide open aperture, but the problem when you're using flash at wide open apertures in the broad daylight is the flash sync speed only maximizes at uh, one two hundredth of a second. So check your manual. If your camera has the ability, now this is a feature of the camera, if your camera has the ability to do high speed sync, you're going to be able to do this. So the next shot that I'm going to show you here has the background blown out with Rob's 85mm f1.8 portrait lens. And the great thing about this is it's not overexposed because he was able to shoot at a shutter speed over the natural sync speed of the shutter, which would have been 1 200 or 1 250th of a second, depending on the model. He was able to shoot that at 1 800th of a second outdoors, balance the ambient light with the flash. And not only that, look at him, he's showing off right now. He took the flash off camera and put it to the side to get the most out of this uh, AWL system here, advanced wireless lighting. So he's shooting off camera, off to the side in, in daylight, and he's doing it with a wide open aperture with his portrait lens. This is something that if, if you want to do, you need the right equipment. So again, do your research, make sure that the flash, ha sorry, the camera has the ability to do high speed sync and uh, get creative with your, with your flashes. Use them outdoors, not just indoors, okay? It's great to use the flash as a fill, and if you can take it off camera, all the better. Now, for those of you that shoot events, this is really important for you guys because I know when I shoot events, I am always popping the flash. A lot of times at these banquet halls, I'm bouncing off of a ceiling that's very high, and I'm doing the flash in quick succession. So I'm putting a lot of strain on the battery and in the SB500, even the SB910, these higher end flashes from Nikon, they have a new booster circuit that allows you to get quicker recycle times. But if you really wanna have the maximum recycle time, and I'm talking about full power shots recycled in one second, you wanna take a look at, I have one right here, the, uh, this is called the SD9 battery pack from Nikon. And this here has the ability to have, I'm just gonna show you, eight AA batteries in it. So if I just take off this right here, you'll see that there are four on one side, there are four on the other. I tell you what, Nikon's pretty forward thinking about this because if you don't have eight batteries, you can still run this off of four. Okay, and then it just goes in this nice light pack right here. It does have a hole at the bottom, so if you wanted to put it, screw it on your tripod socket at the bottom of your camera, you can literally put it on like a plate beneath your camera, or you can strap it on your belt buckle with this um, case right here, okay? A lot of people also use this if they're using their, fl their speed lights on an umbrella in a studio, for example, and they wanna get shots in quick succession, but make sure, folks, that when you investigate whether or not you want to get a battery pack like this, you make sure that the flash has the capability of doing this. And right now in our lineup, the only flash that has the capability of accepting this battery pack is the SB5000. If you have the SB910 uh, and 900 that also have the same connector, you could also get this SD9 battery pack for it as well. Um, but now instead of working with four AA batteries, you're working off of 12. Okay, did I count right? Four times three? Okay, good. So uh, 12 AA batteries. And um, uh, now not only is your recycling time faster, but you actually get more shots because it's uh, dispersing the, the wealth of the energy between all 12 batteries. Okay, so that is the SD9 battery pack. Check it out. If you're shooting events, I think it's a must. If you're even using the flash in a studio, again, you're not plugging it into a wall. You wanna get most bang for your buck. Check this out and you can get 12 batteries instead a four, four, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, next on the lineup is um, a kit that I'm gonna show you now. If you're doing macro photography, if you're doing product tabletop photography, I was just talking with my colleague Mo a while ago. He just graduated from Dawson College a few years ago and he said, I wish I actually had this when I was going to school because it would save me so much headache when I was doing these product shots. If you're shooting jewelry, if you're shooting food, Yes, you can get yourself an SB5000 or uh, you know, an SB700. I've done it myself for small product shots. 
But what Nikon's actually come up with, and this is um, actually an older product, but still in their line, it's very handy, is a product called the R1C1 kit. And we're gonna get a picture of it right now on screen as I get the product myself. This is comprised of essentially two flashes, okay? So there are two speed lights that this kit revolves around. Now, Nikon no longer makes ring lights. Uh, ring lights are very handy for product photography because the idea is if you're taking a macro shot, like what I have here, I have a 105 millimeter macro. And a lot of times if you're taking uh, little details, you wanna put it right in front of the lens. The problem is if you're using a flash, okay, and it's sitting right up top here, it doesn't have the clearance to take a photo of something that's sitting right in front of the lens. So you need to position your flash literally in front of the lens to take a picture of your subject. So this R1C1 kit allows you to do that. And it allows you to do that even if you're shooting one-to-one. -one. And even if your subject is directly in front of the lens, the light here from the speed lights can bend and go right in front of that. And I say speed lights because this is part of the CLS system. If you can see here, I'm gonna break that right off of the front uh, holder there and I can put two speed lights right in front of there. That's what the kit comes with, two speed lights. And if you br you know take apart any ring light, you'll see that there are really only two point light sources there in most cases. And you get the same effect as a ring light, um, only better because now you can adjust the positioning of this light. So if I wanted it to go on top, I can just basically pinch these two clips and run them down to the bottom. They run off uh, CR123 batteries. So they're smaller batteries being used on the SBR200s. If you wanted to, you could purchase extra SBR200s and put, I believe there's up to eight. You could put up to eight on this ring and make yourself a full ring flash. And again, if even if you don't have a 105 macro, if you have a 60 millimeter, a 40 millimeter, the great thing is, is that in the box, now I'll bring out the box uh, in a second here, um, it comes with all the filter attachments. So when you buy this kit, it comes with this black monolith box here, very neat and handy. And it has all these different compartments with all these different items. I'm not gonna go through it, but it's awesome <laughs> because it has, it has gels and it has filters uh, to adjust the colors of your light. It has um, little adapters here too, because if you want, you can have a uh, commander. So if your, flat, if your camera doesn't have a commander, built-in commander on the pop-up flash, it has a commander for you, okay? And that's the SU-800, okay? So we gotta move on, folks. Check out our website for the R1C1 kit. It's a fun little kit to have, especially if um, you're doing close-up photography. Now, I'm gonna end this segment with, again, I like to spread out the love, okay? So even if you don't have the latest and greatest that you know you have a pop-up flash or you have that, that can remotely control these flashes or if you don't have the newest fangled radio flash that can trigger the SB5000 off camera and you wanna start shooting off camera flash, the best thing that you can do for yourself is get a simple TTL remote cord. And if you're looking for one from Nikon, get the SC29. The SC29, if you're looking on our website, there is also one called the SC28, but get the SC29 because the SC29 has the infra, well, it's not an infrared, it's an AF assist illuminator is what it's called. And it helps you focus in literally the pitch black. And what you do is, so for example, if I had a SB700 here, I could pop it on this cord and I could have this end on my actual camera. So. If you're using a more, you know, maybe a more legacy uh, camera and you don't have all these newfangled features and you just want to be able to take the flash off camera, check it out. This TTL cord allows you to get the ability to take it off camera and still get TTL precision, okay? And that's the SC29 cord. I'll show you a couple of examples right now. Simple things that you can do with a off-camera flash. This one was taken by our very own Jay Goff from Nikon Canada. And this is just a one light shot, again, in the daytime and um, off camera. It gives just that added bit of character to your subject when you light them and have shadows. It's, it, you know, it's nice. I showed you a couple of examples 
uh, when you're shooting them directly at. But again, if you can take the flash off camera, that takes your photo photography to the next level. There's another one here. I, I like to take pictures also with sunsets. So I took this one of our very own Kendall. And this was in a sunset out uh, this past summer. And again, I took the flash off camera. I was just hand holding it. So, you know, I didn't have an assistant. I didn't have a stand or anything. But just taking the flash, you know, off camera about this much, your arm's length will give you that element of depth, that element of shadow that gives your pictures just that little bit of umph. Okay. So that is my presentation for the Nikon system. You know, we've called it the CLS. We now call it AWL for the radio system. If you guys have any questions, we're going to get to those after the break. So um, uh, type in your questions in the comment section below and we'll be back right after this. Okay guys, we're back and we're gonna take some of your questions right now from Facebook Live. So if you're viewing this on YouTube, uh, sorry, we're not doing a YouTube Live. This is based on Facebook Live. So um, here are a couple of questions and this one comes, the first one comes from uh, David Short. Okay, so his question is, will there be a recording of this so I can watch it later? Great question because sometimes we re-syndicate this on different uh, social media properties. So this is on Facebook Live. You can rewatch any Facebook episodes after it, after the uh, the recording is over, and you can also watch it typically on our YouTube channel. We'll repost it, provided that it was a clean recording. We'll post it on our YouTube site so you can rewatch all the tips that we did. I will also plug a Learn and Explore series that we did here in our Nikon Canada head office. Um, with Chris Ogunek. He actually did a um, advanced uh, CLS uh, flash seminar here at our head office and we do a few of these here at our head office for Learn and Explore. If you want to know, uh, I suggest you subscribe to our Facebook feed so you can get uh, notification when we're running these at our head office because we only have a limited number of about 40 seats in our office. So we do those and some of them we will rebroadcast on YouTube and we did that for Chris's advanced uh, course which you can find on our Nikon Canada YouTube channel. So there's a few channels out there on YouTube right now. Check out the Nikon Canada one and look for the flash, advanced uh, wireless flash from Chris Ogunek from our Learn and Explore series. You should be able to have that. Actually, Kendall has just told me right now in real time, just like Jack Bauer, real time, um, that she's posted the link to the YouTube video on our comment section. This is the power of Facebook. Unbelievable. Okay, so um, a couple of other questions that I'm going to get to right now from our inbox um, uh, comes from Jake. And he's got a question and he says, can we mix two speed lights together? So for those of you just joining in, uh, we've been talking about all this CLS stuff from Nikon. Creative lighting system is what it stands for. And in answer to your question, Jake, yes, you can mix more than one flash in the system. There are some compatibility things that you have to know, and that is whether or not your 
camera is capable of CLS, as we call it, creative lighting system. So check your manual for that, but bottom line is, if it's CLS, you can shoot in up to three groups of flashes. So you can have a commander flash or a master flash, and up to three different groups of flashes that you can control with three different power levels. So in one group, you could have two flashes. In another group, you can have five flashes. Um, check out the work of Joe McNally, and um, he has some elaborate setup schemes. We actually had him on our Nikon TV a few episodes ago, and we talked about the way he uses speed lights. So in answer to your question, sky's the limit when it comes to Nikon speed lights. But the great news is that if you're now gra graduating to the radio system from Nikon, you can now control up to six groups of flashes and be even more sophisticated with your lighting setups because you can control independently six different uh, power levels, okay? So check that out, guys. Um, great question from Jake. Uh, I got two more questions here. Next one's from Nancy, and her question is, can you mix speed lights, so these type of lights, with studio strobes together? Okay, great question. And if you have a studio at home, you might have Ellen Chrome lights, Alien B lights, Profoto, what, what have you. And you wanna be able to maybe have a kicker light or maybe a fill light with one of our speed lights. Can you mix them together? Typically, yes, you can, but you sort of have to abandon the TTL mode. Uh, there is a mode on these flashes called the SU4 mode. And if you put it on that mode, it won't, uh, trigger the flash with the pre-flash because in order to get, you know, uh, the accuracy of TTL, there has to be an imperceptible pre-flash. And uh, that won't synchronize with your studio flashes. So if you're mixing it with studio flashes and you want to have a studio flash and you want to have an SB700 or an SB5000, take your flash and put it to the SU4 mode and that way it will trigger upon the first burst of light and they will all go off at the same time which just means you have to uh, manually adjust your power on SU4 mode. Okay, great question, Nancy. Uh, next inbox question comes from Prindeep, and the question is, what are the pullout panels on the speed lights? So pullout panels, if I think I understand this question correctly, um, I, I mentioned this before earlier, um, we'll get a close-up of this. This is the SB5000, and the SB700 has this feature as well. Guys, um, if you take your fingernail and then pull this out here, all right, that reveals a dropout panel like that, okay? So there's this little uh, piece of paper here that you can use when you're bouncing light, it'll spill a little light forward. So typically if you're doing bounce flash, uh, all the light goes from the ceiling down on your subject and you get raccoon eyes and you get shadows where you don't want shadows. This will allow you to spray a little bit of light forward so you can get maybe even a catch light in your subject's eye. But once you tuck that away, you're still left with this other piece. Uh, yeah, right there. So this panel right there, if you see that, a lot of people think that this is um, a diffusion piece. It's actually made from the, kind of the same um, pattern as like a f Fresnel lens element. And the purpose of this is not necessarily to diffuse the light, it's really to expand the reach of the light. So if I look on my back of my uh, flash right now, without it deployed, the widest that this head can go is 24 millimeters. What happens if you're shooting with a 14 to 24 and you wanna get coverage on the edges of your frame at 14 millimeter? This will spread the beam as wide as 14 millimeters. So again, it's only really applicable if you have a wide angle lens and it will cut down a lot of the power because you're shooting through another surface of glass, but it allows you to get coverage on the full frame when you're using a wide angle lens. A very important question. I, I'm surprised that I didn't bring that up in the original presentation, but I'm glad that we have Facebook to um, hold me accountable. Now, uh, <laughs> I'm being advised that we are gonna get to your poll results. And uh, we asked you at the beginning of this segment, how many of you, because we're curious, actually have or own a speed light? Okay, so are we gonna show the results of this now? So drum roll, please. It's on the screen? <laughs> All right, so apparently it's on the screen so you can see what the results of that are, okay. I don't see it, but um, I trust that it's there. So um, we have the poll results. What are the poll results, guys? Tell me, tell me what they are. 
84, yes. So 84% of you have speed lights. That's awesome because, you know, I was really wondering myself how many people actually have speed lights. Um, but if, if you uh, don't have a speed light, I hope this presentation kind of made it seem why this is really useful. Even as, even just a kicker light like a SB300. All right, and as I'm surfing through some of your um, comments here, I'm seeing people have everything from the SB700, S, some of you even have the SB5000, 600, SB900, even, oh, um, some of you have never heard of the SB300, so I'm glad we were able to show that today. But um, yeah, a lot of these, everything that I see here in the comment section, they all essentially, with the exception of the SB300, they all talk to one another, folks. So if you have an SB, even a legacy flash, like an SB600 or an SB800, you can use it in conjunction with all of today's current speed light systems. Even the SB5000, which doubles as both a radio and infrared flash. You know, tell you what, that was an awesome episode, guys. Um, thank you for your participation. Thanks for the questions. We're going to do this again in a few weeks on Nikon TV. Until then, keep an eye out on our Facebook page because we're going to be uh, announcing when we're going to have our next episode. As well, for those of you in Canada, uh, subscribe to our page so you can get notifications on our next Learn and Explore series here at our head office in Nikon Canada. Until then, take care, guys.